Okay, in this section, uh, we will introduce a new concept, the angular dispersion. And uh, actually, it's related to the temporal pulse chirp of our interest. So let's start with the relation between angular and the temporal dispersions and derive some uh, critical disper uh, temporal dispersion form uh, formulas. Then a uh, very interesting uh, phenomenon, intensity from tilt, whenever there is angular dispersion. So what is angular dispersion? Uh, let's look at this figure. You have a broadband signal. Okay, The gray one is the power spectrum. The central frequency, say, is omega 0, which is here. And uh, assume at this central frequency, the corresponding wave vector, beta vector, is represented by the green uh, arrow. Say it is along the direction of z-axis. Okay. And then this is defined as the reference direction. Then, if at some higher frequency, say omega equals omega 1, the corresponding propagation direction is different. Say, represented by the blue arrow here, making an angle theta of omega 1 with respect to the reference direction, the green arrow. Then, um, uh, at the third frequency, omega equals omega 2, the propagation direction is also different, making another angle, theta of omega 2, with respect to the reference. So different colors propagate along different directions. This is defined as angular dispersion, or frequency-dependent angle frequency-dependent propagation direction. Okay. So how do we formulate angular dispersion? Actually, it's uh, quite trivial. Just write down your propagation uh, constant. Actually, it's a vector function, not just a scalar function anymore. right? Uh, beta of omega equals the product of this one Okay, and then this is the absolute value of propagation constant. Uh, as we have known, the absolute value or magnitude of propagation constant should be equal to the index of refraction, n of omega, times wave number in vacuum, omega over c. This is always true. The difference is now, in addition to uh, magnitude, you have uh, projections on x and z directions. If it follows this uh, picture, the x component is proportional to sine of theta. The z component is proportional to cosine of theta. And remember, theta is not a constant. It's a function of frequency. Okay? So the second term here is a function of frequency. The arrows changes with direction as frequency changes. Okay. And then this is the equation sheet we will use. And then you can know the meaning of n of omega means uh, material dispersion. Right? If you have material dispersion, n of omega is not a constant but a function of omega. And the theta of omega represents the new concept, angular dispersion. Whenever you have angular dispersion, different colors will propagate along different directions depending on the definition of theta. Okay. But here I want to emphasize angular dispersion is different from angular spreading. What is angular spreading? Roughly speaking, it means with this broadband signal, how wide uh, the group of arrows will spread angular. Okay. Say this number is delta theta. 
you can approximate delta theta by this uh, first order formula theta of omega 1 minus theta of omega 2 absolute value, right? Uh, so it, angular spreading Angular spreading and the angular spreading can be approximated by first order derivative of uh, theta of omega okay, times the bandwidth delta big omega which is shown here okay. the, uh, the width of this power spectrum is the bandwidth okay. and uh, this is different from the angular dispersion they are two different things any question? Now, uh, to our surprise, angular dispersion will automatically uh, transfer to temporal dispersion. Okay. Say we can write down the electric field as a function of x, z, and t. Here we assume there is no y dependence. Okay, this is z axis reference direction. This is x axis the transversal direction, and it's also a function of time. Okay, x z t. It is proportional to real part of uh, the integration of this one. Could you justify why is that? Why an electric field can be always written as real part of this integral. Can you do that? Here I already highlight the blue color and the purple color, right? This one means sinusoidal wave at frequency omega. Omega equals omega zero plus frequency detuning omega t, right? So this is a sinusoidal wave. How about this? This is plane wave, right? Propagating along the direction defined by beta of omega vector, right? So you have sinusoidal wave, you have plane wave together. It means monotonically plane, uh, mono, monotonical plane wave, right? Time harmonic plane wave. And the integration means superposition only. So this is the superposition of infinitely many sinusoidal plane waves. Each one is weighted by this complex number, big A of omega tilt. And by superposition, you can synthesize arbitrary electric field on the xy plane and along the time axis, right? Is it okay? We are just using this mathematical model to express any pulse. We are just using the spectrum to represent the pulse. If you only represent the pulse, you have no space to represent it. You represent it, it is not compact and not uniform. It is Z propagation only. If you have the pulse, you can express it. 表达更丰富的 information 就是我叠加出来的 pulse 不只有在时间上 然后空间上只是沿着z 我的空间上还可以根据我的 beta of omega 来决定 Here we need to talk about angular dispersion So this is necessary Without this term there is no angular dispersion Every color propagates along z direction There is no angular dispersion right. So this is necessary then let's check two spatial points. The first one is the origin, 0, 0, which is here. Okay. If you substitute x equals 0, z equals 0, then beta dot r should be 0 always. 
why? Your position vector r is 0, 0. So no matter what is beta, the inner product is always 0. If this is 0, this term can be dropped, right? So your electric field becomes proportional to real part of a simpler uh, formula. Here you can extract e to the j omega 0 t out of the integration because it's independent of omega tilt variable. All you have to integrate is a of omega tilt times e to the j omega tilt t. Okay, but you can see uh, the terms within the red bracket is nothing but uh, a of t temporal envelope function okay because this is uh, uh, inverse Fourier transform of big a function right so you got small a function in the time domain okay so it means if you observe uh, the electric field at the origin what do you see uh, you can see a temporal envelope function small a of t which is inverse Fourier transform of big A of omega t and uh, with a carrier e to the j omega 0 t in the frequency domain it means maybe a power spectrum represented by the uh, blue curve and the constant spectral phase assuming your big A function is a real function there is no spectral phase so this is the electric field you can observe at the origin. Then, if we move the observation point to here, 0, L, say a distance L after the origin along the reference direction, what can we have? When your position vector is 0, L, x equals 0, z equals l the inner product between beta vector and the position vector should be this right because the beta vector uh, is borrowed from the formula in the previous page equation 3 here okay. and uh, when x equals 0 the contribution from this x projection is nullified right and when z, z equals L, the contribution from Z component is L times cosine theta. Okay, so that's it. That's why the beta dot R, the inner product is this one. And uh, say we define the entire thing as minus of spectral phase modulation function, psi of omega. Okay, then what is the electric field? Electric field at 0, L, and arbitrary time, T, is proportional to real part of, again, carrier can be extracted out of the integration. The integral is in addition to big A and the E to the J omega T or T, as we observed at the origin, there is an extra term. E to the J psi of omega, and the psi of omega is defined here. Okay. Then you can uh, you can see the result should be real part of a new envelope function a prime of t times the carrier, where a prime of t is the inverse Fourier transform of a modulated spectrum, original spectrum big A, times the spectral phase modulation function e to the j psi of omega so represented here the power spectrum does not change but because of this term okay, beta dot r in the presence of angular dispersion beta dot r is no longer zero so you will have a nonlinear function of spectral phase modulation so, of course, now you have been familiar with the impact, right? If this is a parabolic function, what happens? If the short pulse at the origin is transform limited, it becomes chirped when you move the observation point to 0L. 
So that means if you uh, scan the observ observation points along the reference direction, you will see the pulse becomes more and more strongly chirped. Okay? And it occurs whenever you have this one, angular dispersion. If you have zero angular dispersion, theta of omega is just constant zero, right? That is no angular dispersion. Then psi of omega becomes zero. This effect will not occur. So no matter how long you move the observation point, the pulse does not change. There is no extra chirp. But if you have angular dispersion, there is extra chirp. Okay, any question? So this is very interesting. If you have a different color, and a different direction, the input may be a transform limited pulse. 沿着参考方向移动不同的距离，你观察到的 pulse 就有不同的 chirp。这是，这不是从材料来的，这个纯粹是由角度色散来的。OK。Is it OK for you, or you feel very weird? But I can justify why it is natural later, right? In terms of mathematical analysis, it's like this. But I think always we need an intuitive picture. Okay. So this is the way we can justify the frequency-dependent test lens. Okay. Say you have angular dispersion, so beta of omega. Uh, arrow points to different direction at different colors. Okay. Then how about the face front? What is face front? If you have a sinusoidal plane wave propagating along this direction, you can imagine the blue dashed lines can represent the face fronts. Face fronts means if you have a sinusoidal wave, if you collect the peak. <coughs> set of points about peak together it becomes a line right the next line maybe the next next line so you have parallel lines represents the face fronts okay so if you observe the face fronts you can see uh, at the origin this face front uh, passes through cuts through the origin but if you uh, move the observation point to 0L the propagation distance required such that the same sinusoidal plane wave space from cuts through 0L uh, is not L but this distance right this is L times cosine theta of omega okay so that means for a specific color, say frequency omega, the path length is not constant L, but a function of omega. Okay? Uh, the formula is L times cosine of theta of omega. The color 所需要贡献到同样这两个观察点，它的路径长是不一样。其实这个路径长跟角度有关，角度又跟频率有关，所以路径长跟频率有关。That is the so-called frequency-dependent p a s s a g e In terms of variable omega, p as a function of omega equals n times l times cosine theta. Okay, here, material dispersion, n of omega, is also taken into account. In terms of lambda, just change all the variables from omega to lambda. You've got n of lambda times constant L times cosine of theta of lambda. Okay. These two are equations 4 and 5. Okay. 
then it becomes natural, right? If you have frequency dependent past tense, you must have frequency dependent phase accumulation. And that is the source of spectral phase modulation, right? Different frequencies will correspond to different phase accumulations after a fixed uh, propagation distance. So it's a similar effect as material dispersion. Right? spectral phase modulation? the color, the the past tense is material dispersion spectral phase modulation. Angular dispersion is the same, but the result is the same. It has different spectral phase modulation. Okay. So the results are the same, but due to different causes. Okay. So in terms of formulas, okay, you have seen this. Relation between omega and the lambda, first order derivative. You can relate first order derivative, second order derivative, third order derivative of Past days with respect to omega to past days with respect to lambda. Okay. The higher the orders, the more terms you need to relate these two groups of formulas. Okay, any question? Okay. Uh, here, I try to derive dispersion formulas by way of wavelength-dependent past tense, P as a function of lambda. P means past tense. Uh, the angular dispersion-induced spectral phase modulation is like this. Uh, minus of wave number in vacuum, omega over C, uh, times the wavelength, uh, sorry, frequency dependent test states, P of omega. Is it okay for you? Xiang Wei is wave number to the generalize from constant dependent to wave uh, frequency dependent test states. That's it. Starting with the formula about group delay, tau G. The physical meaning of group delay is the time required uh, by different colors to propagate over a certain distance. Okay, it's frequency dependent. And uh, maybe as early as lesson three, we have known group delay is defined as minus of first order derivative of your spectral phase modulation due to the Fourier transform theory, right? I didn't mind. 那时候不是说时间上的shift对应到频谱的linear uh, phase modulation 所以你怎么把slope取出来一阶为分就是那万一我这个不是这个线性函数我还是取一阶为分那我就会得到function of frequency 不会只得到constant 那是一个delay as a function of frequency named as group delay okay? And uh, if you use this formula, okay, shown here, uh, you can get this. The group delay formula is 1 over C, a constant, times past length plus angular frequency times past length derivative. Then uh, you can change the variable from omega to lambda. So P of omega equals P of lambda. Omega becomes 2 pi C over lambda. Okay, well known. How about P prime of omega? You need the help from the previous slide, right? 
here, this one, p prime of omega is related to p prime lambda in this way. Just use this formula. Okay. After that, you've got this, okay, and then you can simplify uh, the terms. Eventually, you got this. Group delay formula is 1 over C times test length minus wavelength times test length derivative. Okay. Secondly, group delay dispersion formula, GDD formula, symbolized by DG, by definition, it's minus of second order derivative of spectral phase because this is the derivative of group delay. So you got a further derivative, you got this. And uh, similarly, if you use uh, a spectral phase modulation function here, you can arrive at this. And uh, the blue one is the same as the previous case represented by this one. The green one, you need the help from the other formula in the previous page. If you use them, you can uh, simplify the formula into this one. Just a constant times a single term, p double prime lambda. And uh, we also know, if you only look at the first order term, uh, GDD parameter DG is approximated by beta 2 times L. It's closely related to the GVD parameter beta 2. We will use it later. The third case, GVD parameter, you can refer to page 5 of this lesson. Uh, big D is some constant times beta 2. Okay, you, can, you see beta 2 here. And uh, if you use the previous result, beta 2, what is beta 2? Just divide big L uh, by both sides of equality. So you can uh, have it's this one over big L. Okay? Uh, eventually, you have uh, this formula, the GBD parameter formula. Okay? So this is the final result, equation 6. So what have we done in this page? Tau G, D G, and the big D are all physical parameters we have seen before. Okay? But previously, we saw these formulas when there is material dispersion only. Here, we are talking about the impact of angular dispersion. But still, uh, material dispersion is still taken into account because p of lambda, p of omega or p of lambda ha can have n as a function of omega, the material dispersion. So you can regard these formulas as the generalizations of the old formulas. Previously, material dispersion only. Now, both material and uh, angular dispersion are taken into account in these formulas. Okay. So that's the meaning of this page. Any question? Oh, 在只有材料色散的时候 Tau-G的公式是什么 D-G的公式是什么 D的公式是什么 D的公式是什么 但是exact formula还没有推出来，因为比如说equation six, this term preserved is preserved p double prime lambda. I did not calculate what is p double prime of lambda yet, right? I just leave it there. But in the future, if you can calculate p double prime lambda, you can know uh, the formula about GVD parameter big D. 
in the presence of material and the angular dispersion. We will see that example shortly.